بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ومن تبع بإحسان إلى يوم الدين All praise is for Allah the most high the most merciful I ask Allah to send peace and blessings upon his final messenger Muhammad and whoever follows Prophet Muhammad may peace and blessing be upon Prophet Muhammad in good deeds until the day of resurrection. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Now, our topic for today is an aspect that affects every couple in his or her life. It is the right of the spouse or the rights of the spouse. Islam has en enjoined upon the husband duties towards his wife and vice versa. And among these duties are some which are shared by both husband and wife. We will mention by the help of Allah the Most High some of the texts of the Quran and the Sunnah which have to do with these duties of the spouses towards one another. Quotes also comes from the monetaries and views of the scholars. Kindly follow closely. Firstly, the rights of the wife which are hers alone. The wife has financial rights over her husband which are the mahar spending and accommodation and she has non-financial rights which as such as fair division between co-wives being treated in a decent and reasonable manner and not being treated in a harmful way by the husband financial rights the mahar a dory that one pays at the time of marriage. This is the money to the wife. It's her entitlement. <clears throat> when the contract is completed or when the, co the marriage is being consummated, it is the right which the man is obliged to pay to the woman. Allah says interpretation in the Quran, in the meaning of the Quran, and give to the woman whom you married their mahar, obligatory bridal gift, given by the husband to his wife at the time of marriage, with a good heart. Surah An-Nisa, chapter Nisa. The prescription of the mahar demonstrates the seriousness and the importance of the marriage contract. And it is a token of respect and honor to the woman. The mahar is not a condition or essential part of the marriage contract, according to the majority of the fuqaha. These are the schools of thought. Rather, it's done, rather it is one of the consequences of the contract. If the ma marriage contract is done without any mentioning of the mahar, it is still considered valid according to the consent of the majority of the scholars. Why? Allah has said in his book, and this is according to the inter interpretation of the holy verses. Allah says in his book, There is no sin on you if you divorce woman while you yet have not touched, have sexual relationship with them, nor appointed unto them their mahar. This is in chapter Baqarah, Surah Al-Baqarah. The fact that the dory is permitted before the consummation of the marriage or before stipulating the mahar indicates that it is permissible not to stipulate the mahar 
in the marriage contract. I hope you're following. If the mahar is stipulated, it becomes obligatory upon the husband. If it's not stipulated, then he must give the mahar that is given to the woman of similar status to his wife. Now let's move on to the second part. Spending. The scholars of Islam are agree that it is obligatory for the husband to spend on their wives and the condition that the wife make herself available to her husband. If she refuses, rebels, then she is not entitled to the spending. The reason why it is obligatory to spend on her is that the woman is available only to her husband. Because of the marriage contract, and she is not allowed to leave the material, the material home except with his permission. So he has to spend on her and provide for her. And this is in return for her making herself available to him for his pleasure. What is meant by spending is providing what the woman needs of food and accommodation. She has the right, she has the right to the things that will make her, you know, what should I say, that is needed throughout her lifestyle. She has the right to this stuff. Now, Allah has said in his verse, the Quran, but the father of the child shall bear the cost of the woman's food and clothing on the responsible basic. And this is in chapter Baqarah. Let the rich man spend according to his means. And the man whose resources are restricted, let him spend according to what Allah has given to him. This is in Surah Al-Talaq. From the Sunnah, the Prophet wasalam, said to Hind bint Ubay, Ubayya, the wife of Abu Sufyan, who had complained that he did not spend on her, take, the Prophet wasalam, said, take what is sufficient for you and your children on a uh, on a reasonable basis. It was narrated that al, al, uh, that Aisha said, Hind bint Utbah, the wife of Abu Sufyan, entered on to Prophet Muhammad wasalam, and said, O Messenger of Allah, Abu Sufyan is a stingy man who does not spend enough on me and my children except for what I take from his wealth without his knowledge. If, if, there, if there any sin on, is there any sin on me for doing that? That's a question. The Messenger of Allah, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Take from his wealth what is reasonable, only what is sufficient for you and your children. Narrated by Al-Bukhari. So we can see from this narrations of the Prophet wasalam, and most of all statements of the Creator which specify rights of the spouses. It was narrated from Jabir, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet of Allah, the Prophet Allah of Allah, Muhammad wasalam, may peace and blessing be upon Prophet Muhammad, said in his Farewell sermon. Fear Allah concerning women. Verily, you have taken them on the security of Allah, the Most High, and intercourse with them has been made lawful unto you by words of Allah. You too have rights over them, and that they should not allow anyone to sit on your bed. That is, not let them into your house or the house whom you do not like but if they do that you can chastise them but not severely severely their rights upon to you are that you should 
provide for them food and clothing in a fitting manner narrated by Muslim. Accommodation. This is also one of the wife's rights, which means that her husband should prepare for her accommodation according to his means and ability. Allah the Most High has said in the, in, the, in the interpretation of the meaning of the Quran, lodge them, the divorced woman, where you dwell according to your means. This is in chapter Talaq. And for today, we're going to make a point of stoppage here. We'll continue in our next sitting of the rights of the husband and wife. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Wa ntabi'a ahsan ila yawmiddin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.